we're speaking with Dennis Reinbold. And I guess the, the first question is, what would be your official role? Uh, Dry official Reinbold. role is uh, team owner of Dry Reinbold Racing. So would that mean that you're the banker? or? It, it means all those things. It means I try to delegate as much as I can so I don't have to do that much. So, But you pay the bills. Pay the bills, uh, all that. And we've known each other for a long time. Yeah. So what would be your background in racing before, let's say, before the IRL? Well, yeah, I mean, John, when you drove for BMW back a long time ago, I came out uh, shortly after that and watched you practice out here uh, for the Porsche team back uh, back in the day. And, you know, had a taste for the IndyCar series way before then and, and just uh, grew up coming out to the track as a kid. And, and it's just been in my blood, so... Uh, being part of this event for the last uh, 11 years now has is, is really been a, an extreme honor and, and just a treat. But your family, weren't they in racing a little bit too? Yeah, my grandfather actually uh, built the starting row, front row in 1931. He had the front row and then he had the uh, 33rd car in, on the grid that year. So he came How'd in. How'd that guy feel? <laughs> yeah, he, he felt like a little left out, I think. But uh, he came in in the uh, 20s and worked for names like Duesenberg, Stutz, and did a lot of body manufacturing and things like that. And then he went on to do uh, sprint cars and midget cars for a number of years. Awesome. Tell us a little bit about your family, your more immediate family, not. Well, I, you know, my family were from Indianapolis on the north side here, and uh, your wife used to be a professional. She tennis. played tennis on the tennis tour for about uh, 11 years, and uh, got to the final eight of pretty much all the uh, major tournaments. So, uh, so that's what I do when I'm not at the racetrack. I'm with my boys at tennis tournaments, and that's that's pretty much our lives. So they're following her path, not yours. Yeah, exactly. No interest in racing whatsoever, just all tennis. So that's what they focus on. So what's more expensive, tennis or racing? Yeah, I'll definitely racing. Well, good thing they're in tennis then. Yeah, it's a pretty good idea. What's your favorite racetrack? Uh, this by far. I mean, aside from here, uh, I like the mile and a half tracks because super speedways are so much fun. But uh, now with Long Beach added to the schedule and St. Pete being such an event and then Toronto's going to be great. Uh, a lot of our tracks, uh, it's, I like the variety, and uh, the street courses now have become really events. So to go to those is like you're going to a big outdoor concert or party for the whole weekend. I mean, we don't get to partake of that, but uh, you don't. No, we don't. Well, uh, we have reputation a job to do. isn't what. <laughs> no, we have a job to do. So, um, the harder question, then, what's the least favorite racetrack? Least favorite racetrack is. It is easy for me, and there are two of them, and that's Milwaukee and Richmond. And the only reason I say that, I love going there, but those are the I most know, they're expensive, expensive racetracks we go to. I don't think, well, I'm not going to jinx it, I'm not going to say anything. It's it just we've had a lot of uh, damage at those tracks, so hopefully our future changes that. Well, I want, yeah, and I was going to ask you that, what makes it expensive, because I want everybody to understand yeah. that it, it wasn't because you spent a lot of money there doing party. No, no, not at all. It was all we spent a lot of money there with Delara, yeah. buying replacement uh, parts and components. What's your most memorable racing moment? Um, you know, our, pretty easy. Our first race, uh, we really got started, and three weeks later, we assembled a team, put our shop together, put a car together, went down to Walt Disney World in 2000, and went out and won the race. So... You know, there we were. It was, we were undefeated and thinking, okay, this is the easiest thing in the world. So it was great. Uh, but uh, so that was really ranking up there because, you know, my dad was there. So that was a good moment for he and I to be together and hang out. And, and it just really felt great to, to put that together in such a short time and end up winning the race. Well, I'm, that, so that was an easy one, right? Yeah, that was easy. Um, who's your idol in racing? Um, boy, a lot of them. Uh, I was, uh, my uncle worked on Lloyd Ruby's pit crew back in the early 70s, and Lloyd was always the underdog, so I always really liked Lloyd Ruby and, and got to meet him before he passed away, uh, and, and that was a treat for me to have my picture taken with Lloyd and, and get to know him a little bit. Uh, so he was he was one of those unsung drivers that just kind of always ended up having bad luck, but was always the underdog that I always rooted for. I'm going to ask you one more question. And this is going to be the tough one. What do I do that drives you nuts? What do you do that drives me nuts? Yeah. Uh, that's how long do we have? 
Well, let me see. Um, aside from the Maserati. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> and, and what else, no? You want to pre- preface it with anything? <laughs> no, like... not really. Not really. No, you, uh, you are very thorough and diligent, and that's a good thing. That's, that's a good track. To, it's a good trait to be an excellent driver, and you push hard, and you're not satisfied with anything but excellence. Uh, but it, it leaves a lot to catch up with, so we have to work pretty hard to stay up with you. So that's all good, though. That's okay. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> Looking forward to the month? Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait for the rain to go away and get out there and start running. Well, me too, and I appreciate you having me on the team, Dennis. All right. Thanks, John.